car strength. So if you're just getting into whiskey, you might not have had a car strength whiskey before. Or maybe you went to a bar and you ordered a car strength whiskey and they offered you water as well. Whether you're just getting into whiskey or maybe you've got 35 years experience of drinking single cask, single malt, car strength whiskey, this video is for you. So grab a dram, grab a seat, and let's. Welcome to First Phil, I'm Phil and I'm going to fill you in about whiskey. So today we're talking about car strength. And the thing about car strength is it's actually about what hasn't happened to the whiskey. So what hasn't happened? They haven't added water to the spirit before it was put in the bottle. So why would you add water to the spirit? Well, firstly, it makes good business sense. It means the spirit can go further. It means you can fill up more bottles. Secondly, it's more palatable for most consumers. Um, it's an easier drink, it makes it smoother, it's less burn in your mouth. And thirdly, it makes each batch more consistent, which is why with car strength whiskies, you often see the batch number because each batch will have its own quirks and own character. Whereas with your lower percentage alcohols, your mass market whiskies, they want to make sure each batch is consistent so the consumer can make sure they get the same product every time. And because no water has been added to the car strength whiskey, it often means it can be between 52% alcohol all the way up to even around 66% alcohol. So the big difference between cast drink whiskey and regular strength whiskey is that cast drink whiskey will often be more concentrated or have more flavor. And that's because the esters, the taste molecules, often attach themselves to the alcohol content. Not only are you gonna get more burn and more alcohol, you're often gonna get more flavor. And then what you can do is you can add water and kind of adjust the strength of that alcohol yourself to whatever matches your palate. And when you add water, it often can change that flavor profile. It can bring out different flavors than what you're getting at castric level. So you can add some water, see what happens, add a bit more, see what happens, and find the strength that you like. With some castric whiskies, you might even just prefer them at cast strength. And the thing is about adding water is you just gotta be careful not to over dilute it. But again, it's all about personal preference. Just experiment with it and see the way you like to drink your cast drink whiskey best. But speaking of water, and I mentioned this in my how to drink whiskey episode, gotta be aware of the type of water you're adding. You wanna add some water that has heaps of chlorine in it or heaps of lime in it or something that's gonna affect the flavor of the water. You know, generally you want spring water or filtered water. So it's more neutral in profile. You're getting as much as you can out of the spirit and you're not getting any of these extra unwanted flavors from the water. And the thing about cast strength whiskies is it's only been minimally filtered to sort of remove the solids and the bits in the spirit. And it normally hasn't been chill filtered. Because the thing is, with lower percentage alcohol whiskies, like around 40%, and if they're unchill filtered, when you do add water to the whiskey yourself, it'll go a little cloudy. And this turns a lot of consumers off. They go, oh, what's that? Clouds and stuff, and it looks all a little bit milky. I don't like it. No, stop it, stop it. And then so, you know, the distillers, okay, we'll chill filter it. It's cloudy, you should like it. Nothing wrong with it. It's just cloudy. A lot of these lower percentage alcohol whiskies, they chill filter their whiskey, so then you don't get the cloud on the whiskey. But with cast strength whiskey, because of its high alcoholic content, you won't get the cloudiness sort of anyway, which means you'll probably get more flavor from your cast strength whiskey. So the thing about cast strength whiskey is they're very high in ABV or proof, but often they were even higher when they came off the still, around 68.8% than when they come out of the cask. So why is that? Well, it's because of a thing called the angel's share. Now every year, about 2% of the spirit is actually lost. It just disappears and evaporates into thin air, gone forever. It's what we call the angel's share. So when they take the spirit and they put it into a cask, into a warehouse, cold warehouse, moist warehouse, places like Scotland, from day one, the ABV will start dropping until the day that it's bottled. And that's because the alcoholic content evaporates before the water content. And depending on the storage conditions, this could be quite a quick thing or quite a slow thing. And that's why you get bottles like the 2018 release of Balvenie 50-year-old, which was only 41.6% alcohol. 
because over all those years sitting in the cask, the alcohol's evaporating and been lost to what they call the angel's share. But in warmer climates, like in America and Kentucky, they actually allow the proof to go up. And this happens because of the warmer climate. The water evaporates through the wood, but the alcohol can't evaporate. And so what happens is when they take the spirit out of the cask, it actually can be a higher proof or higher ABV than what was actually taken out of the still, which is why you get some bourbons, which is just crazy high ABV and crazy high proof. So where do you start? Where do you start your car strength whiskey journey? Well, I've got a few here, a few suggestions. Let's get started. So the first whiskey I want to recommend is the Abalor Abana, and this is one of the first widely available car strength whiskies that came out in the 1990s. And it's quite a famous malt because it pays homage to actually how they used to make whiskey in the late 1800s by they solely aged the whiskey in Oloroso sherry butts, like only sherry butts. They don't put it in any American oak casks or anything. It's spent its whole life in there. And you can watch a little bit more about casks here in my casks video. But yeah, and the other thing about the Ablo up and out is it's, it has batch numbers. See, it has a batch number, and this one is batch number 61. That's the thing about this one as well, is um, it can vary between different batches. And you know, some people like some of the older ones, some people think the new ones are just as fine. For me, my personal opinion, I mean, if you gave me some of this, I'm not gonna say no, you know. Hey, do you want a whiskey? Nah, wrong batch. If I got a new one, it was full, probably drink it. And what are you gonna expect from this whiskey? Well, lots of fruit, dried fruit, and a lot of spice. And I, and I talked about this whiskey in my other video, Next Level Malts, which you can watch, and that goes through some more of the flavors you get from this whiskey. Okay, next cast drink whiskey. Okay, and the next whiskey from my collection is the Glen Farkless 105. And the Glen Farkless also has quite an interesting history. It was the first cast strength whiskey to come out in 1968. And they renamed it to the 105, representing the British proof, which is a little bit different than American proof, which is the same as 60% alcohol volume. This whiskey, it's been aged in ex bourbon barrels and also been aged in ex sherry barrels as opposed to the Abenar, which is solely sherry. So you get a bit of a mixture of both on this one. I read somewhere that it's probably an eight to 10 year old. Um, and also the interesting thing about this distillery is that it's family owned. I mean, this is not owned by big some big corporate. This is like a family owned distillery. You can visit there. You can see all like all the previous owners on the wall and stuff. It's quite cool. I've been there and it can be quite affordable too. It was as cheap as some of the normal 40% whiskeys and it's one liter. So you're gonna a lot more bang for your buck for this one. I don't know if that's the same where you are. I know Australia is ridiculous how overpriced it is in Australia. And yeah, so I'd recommend this whiskey. So next whiskey. So we've got two whiskies here. And the reason I've got two is they share something in common that these ones don't have. And that is an age statement. We've got a 12 year old and a 12 year old. And the thing is about cast strength whiskies is actually, you know, if you go to your typical bottle store, not your like specialist one, but like your typical supermarket or bottle store, most of the cast strength whiskies in the shop won't have age statements. And there's a reason for this. And that's because it just makes better business sense if you can add water to the bottle and you know, your cask can go further. Well, this is cask strength, it comes straight out of the cask. And then it's got the age statement. And as we talked about the angel's share, so it's actually lost a decent amount of that whiskey in the cask again. So it really doesn't make good business sense for a cask strength whiskey with an age statement, but both these have them. So I really respect both these distilleries. Um, and just a little bit about both. Aaron is from the Isle of Aaron. It's an island malt. This is a fantastic cast strength whiskey. It's not as strong as these other ones. This is 52.9%. And maybe that's because of the angel share. Maybe it's lost that alcohol volume because it's been in a cask for 12 years. Out of all my cast strength whiskies, this is probably my favorite and hence probably why it's all gone. In my next level video, I talk about the Glenmorangie, which was aged in Sauterne cask and, the, and Aaron's also just really interesting things with different like Spanish wine, they're aging, doing lots of cool stuff. So do look into Aaron, they're a really interesting distillery. The Springbank, and I talked about this in my next level malt whiskey video. 
this is a great whiskey it's a really interesting history and the thing is about springbank is they do everything the old-fashioned way everything's sort of done by hand and it's really interesting do look into the history of springbank if you're thinking about buying a bottle so there's one more cast drink whiskey i want to recommend and this time we're going to the boss level the octomore so this whiskey is the most heavily peated whiskey that you can buy on the market. So this is going to be more smoky than Ardbeg, more smoky than Laphroaig, more smoky than the Port Charlotte. Um, now this is aged five years and as I talked about in my Whiskey for Beginners video, don't be afraid of young peaty whiskies because actually they, if you like peat that is, if you don't like peat be afraid of them. But if they're young and you like peat don't be afraid of it. So this is an aged five years. And this is bottled at 59.5%. So big, powerful whiskey, car strength whiskey, plus lots of smoke, lots of... If you just want to get beaten up a little bit, sort of knocked around, and uh, this is the one to do it. But I'll talk more about this whiskey. I'm going to do a peated video soon. Fantastic whiskey, in my opinion, but some people hate it. You might hate it. I don't know. And the other thing about this is it's probably more expensive than any other ones that I've got here. But it's really good. You know, you're going to get like... Let's just have a little smell. You know, it's like the, what's the, what's that war where the Spanish and the English went to war and you know, there's like a hundred burning ships in the English Channel. That's what this smells like. like just like that, you know, exactly like that. Cause I know, you know, I don't know, but that's what it smells like. So there we have it, car strength whiskey. So hopefully now when you go down to the shop, go down to your bottle store, you will look out for whiskies that say car strength. Maybe you need to add one to your collection to kind of spice things up a bit, you know, lift that strength, throw in a few more punches for your whiskey night. And, you know, and if I've missed any whiskies that you think will kind of like, yeah, this car strength whiskey, you got to try that one. Put it in the comments. Other people might find it helpful. A lot of people getting into it. And I also know a lot of you are really experienced with whiskies and probably had a lot more than I have. So, do comment and recommend what you think would be a great cast drink whiskey for people who haven't probably had as many to try. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure you give it a like, subscribe, and hit the bell because you don't know when my videos are going to come out. You don't know. It could be tomorrow. It could be next month. It could be five minutes. But above all, share and enjoy. Beauty.